Today's Best Western has a new perspective. It's exciting, contemporary, and inviting. Both worldly and local. Stylish, yet refreshing. Convenient. Inspiring. Comfortable. Flavorful. Fun. And more rewarding. Introducing Best Western Hotels and Resorts. With over 4,100 locations worldwide, there's a hotel for every occasion. Wherever life takes you, Best Western is there. una carriera di marketing che si estende su oltre 30 anni. Larry Mogenowski ha accumulato un patrimonio di esperienze, da shampoo a dentifricio, da snack salati a pannolini usa e getta, da resort di lusso al settore immobiliare. La sua esperienza nel settore delle strategie di marketing e comunicazione è conosciuta in tutto il Nord America. Management supervisor per la famosa carriera di alberghi Four Seasons Hotels and Resort. 25 anni fa Larry ha formato la LMA Communication Inc. Larry è anche autore di tre libri molto famosi nel settore alberghiero, aggiungo io, Are You a Nostrich or la, or la Yama, Yama Rules e Hotel Yama. Chiamo sul palco Larry Mojanowski. I'm told I'm supposed to stand here. Good morning, everybody. I can't see you, so because of the lights, but I know you're there. I'm going to talk today, and there will be almost no numbers. I want to talk about something called the guest experience. So let's get started. A little bit about me. I am not a hotelier, but I am probably the most published hotelier in the world. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm a packaged goods marketer. I worked for a couple of small companies called Procter and Gamble and Pepsi. You might have heard of them. Then I got the hotel bug and I worked for seven years for Four Seasons and three years for Preferred. It was fun, and today my company has uh, a lot of clients, and I've published three books, sold about, I don't know, 10, 12,000 copies. I make $1.37 per copy that I sell, which I donate because it's not a lot of money, and I also, uh, I guess, write for a number of publications. Those are six of them. Pretty much once every week there's an article out and at the end of the presentation if you either give me your card or email me, I will put you onto my distribution list and you'll get two articles every Friday for your amusement. But I've won a lot of awards, we won't talk about them, but I wanted to show you this map and this is all of the places I've traveled to review hotels in the past three years which is probably more than most of you. In fact, I am keeping a tally and I've visited 236 hotels over the past five years. And I've learned only one thing. The problems you are facing, whether you're in Florence or in Rome or in Milan or any other city, are identical to the problems they're facing in Santa Barbara and Shanghai. The problems are the same. So let's talk about the world today. Uh, there are so many brands, and I heard that 98% of hotels in Italy don't have brands. Well, even if you did, there are so many brands, like, who cares? And, oh, the brands are merging. Well, that's really exciting. I don't know to who, but maybe to the shareholders, because they're launching even more brands are coming out. And you might not have seen these brands, because they're in pilot projects in other countries, mostly in the United States. But if you can tell me which one of these brands go with which one of the super brands, except for the one that says Hyatt-centric, which I understand because it has the word Hyatt in it, um, I'm as confused as you are. And so is the consumer, because the consumer is changing. Look at these pictures I've pulled out of stock, and they're not old people like me. They're younger people. I turned 60. I am uh, old. But the new consumer is younger. And they're on the mobile all the time. Now, I am too. And everything, the world has gone mobile. You've heard many discussions about that. It's obvious. We're not going to talk more about that. 
because everyone's booking online, whether they're booking through the hotel website or whether they're booking through an OTA or any other program. Very few people are calling by voice. Very few people are using travel agents anymore. And here's a challenge. If we go through any of these, our hotels look the same. So think about all the money that you've spent in architecture. Think about all the money you've spent on your rooms. Think about all the money you've spent in promotion and marketing. And there you are, the same as everybody else. One picture, 180 characters of description, and that's it. And people have to make a decision. What are they going to make their decision on? Price and a star rating. Because TripAdvisor is God. TripAdvisor is the most important thing on earth. And I have been in situations where, quite literally, general managers have been fired because their TripAdvisor rating went down from 4.7 to 4.3. Now think about that for a second. Think about the statistics, if you can remember back to university, what a 4.7 to 4.3 decline means. It's not significant, yet owners are so concerned and so crazy about their TripAdvisor scores that many will also do things like trying to coerce you to give them a great rating. It, it really has become a bit of a ratings game because the traditional rating programs, the vested reviews that were done by professionals who knew and could understand the nuances, they're gone. They're not important anymore. Social media is how you tell your story your Facebook site, perhaps you have a YouTube channel. This is how you are communicating through to your audience. And this is a diagram I did for a new general manager. I'll email it to you if you like. And this basically is all of the information you have to have if you're a director of marketing in a hotel. This is what you have to do. And in the center, you can see it says successful hotel marketing. I tried to explain all of the aspects of hotel marketing and the general manager's response, well, thank goodness I have a director of marketing because I don't understand half of these things. But every one of those boxes represents a different aspect of hotel marketing and realistically, you don't have to know any of that. Don't worry about it. Just say it's going to happen. Because Airbnb is your new competitor. If you were here yesterday, they talked about the sharing economy. I'll say that Airbnb is the unsharing economy. And it's unsharing because hoteliers pay taxes. Hoteliers employ people. Hoteliers plan and deliver for their guests. Airbnb is somebody who says, oh, I got a room. I'm going to cheat the government and I'm not going to pay any tax. That's what Airbnb is all about. It's the cheating economy, not the economy that we're in, which is the hotel economy. I won't go any further. I was in a two-hour debate with people from Airbnb at one point, I just said, uh, forget it. <laughs> so why do we as hoteliers innovate? Well, it's all about the guest. We tend to forget when we're here talking about technology that the guest is important. The guest is why we're in the world of hotels. The guest is why we have a hotel. The guest is why we survive. So we have to excite them. We also have staff. When I worked for our friends at Four Seasons Hotels, they only have one rule. It's called the golden rule. Has anybody ever heard of this? OK, so the rule is very simple. And think about it for one minute. It is the cornerstone of their business. And Four Seasons has a really good business. And they say, treat your guest the same way you treat your employee, the same way you treat your suppliers. If you follow this one rule, you will have a fantastic property. And if you don't, you're in for trouble. So think about your own operation. Think about how you treat your employees. Think about how you treat your guests. And now say, are they going to be the same? Because what we're all about is creating memorable experiences. And what, what we really want to do is build share of mouth, which becomes share of mouse, because that's what it's all about right now. And that ultimately is going to build revenue. I uh, put in the right currency, I hope. Um, so I think the program said 20, but I simplified it into 10 ways that you can innovate. And I want us to focus on activities that you can use right now, and one or two of them that might be a little bit more into the future. So let's start. 
The world is online and let's start with your own website. Let's really look at what your website's about. And it has to work flawlessly on mobile. There are no excuses. If your site doesn't work in mobile, close your hotel. It has to work perfectly on mobile. Forget about the computer. Look at it only on mobile. See whether it makes sense to you. It doesn't necessarily have to have all of the data and all the information, but certainly enough to convince the guest that they would like to stay with you. You have to have photography on the site, but it has to load quickly. If it doesn't load quickly, it's useless. And I'd like you to show the accommodations. If you don't show the bed, you're not showing your hotel. This is the most critical aspect. I've produced uh, 200, 250 websites in my company, and the first thing I say is, how quickly can I get a picture of the bedroom? Because that's where I'm going to make my decision. If the bedroom is beautiful, I will get a sale. If I can't see the bedroom, I don't really understand what it looks like, I don't have a diagram, it's not going to sell. I want to know how to get to the hotel. We take it for granted that everybody knows where the Arno River is or where the Vatican is. But if you're booking from out of town, you might not know. So you have to include a link and relationship to Google Maps. And you have to be in the languages that people are booking you in. I've seen many websites for Italy. They're in English, thank goodness, as well as Italian. But they're missing other languages, uh, German, French, Chinese perhaps. These are opportunities for you. And it's don't use Google Translate. Get them translated, even if it's a single page. It's a very important aspect of growing your business. Once you have the site, you now have to have an online presence. This is number two. So what is it? Starting with SEO, search or engine or optimization. So look at your site organically. Remember that what you see if you're searching from your hometown is going to be different than what people see 60 miles away and 1,000 miles away. Check your photos on your review site. In fact, spend a lot of money on your photos to make sure they're as accurate as they possibly can be and make sure they're properly displayed. If they're not correct, get them corrected. There are companies that do this. Social media integration is really important. Decide what social media you're going to participate in and do it professionally. Do not assign it to the general manager's secretary to do. Define it as a task and execute it. It can be done in-house, it can be done by a separate agency, but the fact is it's a priority and has to be done correctly. And then you have to look at, understand how your sites are portrayed by the OTAs. So look at your descriptions, analyze them, tweak them, look at the photos they're using, and spend a lot of time to get it right. Imagine you have very few words to describe your property, so your words might be, the best luxury hotel in Florence might be your lead words. That might be enough to capture the imagination of the people who are considering booking with you. And then the next step is you want to continue that relationship with the guest through effective email communications to them, not superfluously, at least once a month, not once a day or once a week, they'll get annoyed with you. But give them meaningful and relevant information that will continue the relationship. So the next one I'm going to move away from the online world and I'm going to talk about your property because really what we're talking about is the guest experience. And it all starts with your staff. You have to understand and have to empathize that your staff has needs and they have to be taken into the fold as part of the team. And I'm going to give you a very simple example. I was staying in a hotel in Rimini a few uh, weeks ago, and I struck up a conversation with the doorman. And doorman was a fantastic person. He'd been at the hotel 30 years. He could rhyme, rhyme off the names of all of the movie stars that had stayed in the hotel. I said, that's fantastic. And then I said to him, and Lorenzo, did you speak to Lorenzo about this? Lorenzo, who's Lorenzo? And I said, well, he's the managing director. And he said to me, I never knew his first name. So I said, there's a disconnect between the fact that you have someone who is directly related to the guest. 
He's speaking to the guest and creating that first impression, and he doesn't even know the name of the managing director. What's wrong in this situation? Why is it the managing director never invited the doorman to have lunch with him, to talk to him, to see what's happening, to learn from him? Another example, and I talked about it this morning. I said, I'm going to show you two slides, and two slides are going to tell you what's wrong with the hotel industry. First slide, picture of a general manager. And I said, here's the general manager of this hotel. Has a master's degree in hospitality from Lausanne. He teaches across all of the country. He's very well known in circles. He's considered one of the finest general managers in the whole industry. And here, picture this lady. Her name is Adriana. We think she's from Slovakia, but she may be from Romania, but she's probably from Albania. And I'm sure she has papers that aren't legal. And all we do with this lady is worry about how many rooms she's done in a shift. And we worry about whether we can give her a little bit less work so we can save some money, which means at night she's working part-time as a cocktail waitress. And I ask you the question of these two people, who's more important to your hotel? Who is the one that's going to interface with the guest? Who is the one that's going to reduce your star rating on TripAdvisor from five to four or three because she made a mistake because she was working so hard because you reduced the number of hours for her? The answer is Adriana is more important. And the, once you understand that, you will understand what it will take to be a successful hotel. Remember the golden rule, treat your staff the same way as you treat your guests. You have to respond to TripAdvisor, you have to thank people, and when you, don't, when you do something wrong, admit the mistake and encourage those people to speak to you offline. You'll gain respect amongst people who are looking at TripAdvisor, and believe me, they are looking at TripAdvisor before they book you. We don't talk very much about voice reservations. We tend to forget it in the world of technology, but people will phone your hotel, they will inquire, and that's the most important issue. You have to be able to answer the phone 24-7. If you can't do it in your hotel, find a service that will do it for you. It's not very expensive. And you want to establish and create conversations with your guests. You want your guests to feel a part of the process. And you'll learn from your guests. And it'll be great because every guest you as a manager interact with is a guest that becomes one of your disciples who will talk about how fantastic it was that the managing director had an opportunity to speak to me. And wasn't that great? So that's really important. And then talk about your local area, sell what's exceptional. You're not just selling a hotel, you're selling the, the town you're in, the country you're in, the world that you're in. And the more you can talk about it and give information to a guest, the better you're going to be. Because we're in a world, people don't come to Italy to look at skyscrapers. They come to see sites that were built many years before you were born. That's the excitement of Italy. That's the fun of Italy. And you want to embrace your region. You want to be able to know everything about a region. So time, a little bit of quick example for you. This morning, I was in a beautiful hotel and I looked at the jam that was sitting on the table and it's made in Romania. Why isn't it made in Italy? Uh, no disrespect, it's just a question I have. Because we are in Italy, I want to really learn and enjoy everything about this country. I want a local experience because I want to be part of this old world charm. I want to learn about it. And I want you as a hotelier to demonstrate your local knowledge to me so that I can feel good and talk again about all the great things that are happening in this, in this hotel I'm staying at and in the local region. But at the same time, I want it to be modern. Of course, you're going to have a look and a feel for your hotel, but you better make sure the Wi-Fi is free and you better make sure it's fast because if not, I will burn you, and it will burn you really badly. You have to have Wi-Fi. And, oh yes, by the way, everything in the room has to work well. The television, the telephone, if I ever use it, I want to be able to get to the front desk. And the beds have to be comfortable. Test them yourselves. I don't want pillows that are hard as a rock, and I don't want beds that feel like I'm sleeping on a piece of concrete. I want a really comfortable bed. If you can't deliver that, replace them. 
because what you want to do is create this environment that is Instagrammable. I do not know if that is a word, but I want you to think about how you capture every single aspect of your hotel in an Instagrammable moment because that is free advertising for you and it's very important. We used to think way back that as an old hotelier that my goodness, the restaurant's terrible, let's give it up to a chain. But realistically, this is the heart of your operation. Your executive chef and the people who work in your food and beverage are vital to the success of your hotel. Think about Airbnb. They offer rooms. They don't have a chef. They don't have waiters and waitresses. They don't have menus that are changing every day. They don't have truffles. You do, let's hope. And you want to create what I call menu poetry. Think about every dish as being exceptional. Think about the presentation of that dish because that is going to be a very important aspect of how you are able to grow your business. Be inventive. Everything has to be locally sourced. You do not want to be buying your Parmesan cheese from a factory in New Jersey. It's not Parmesan cheese. It's a cheese, an edible cheese product. So what you ultimately want to do is create the guest experience they can't get elsewhere. I'm a lover of wine, many of you are, but because of that, there are regional wines. I want to see a wine list that talks about your region. I don't want to see wines from the United States on there. If you're in Lazio, I want Lazio wines. If you're in Tuscany, I want Tuscan wines. And the other regions, of course. You want to educate through tasting. You want to give people an opportunity to tell a story. Train your staff to do this. Give people free samples. Talk about the wine. Talk about the value in it. And give people an opportunity to visit local vineyards and talk about wines more and, in fact, encourage sampling because it creates meaningful memories for the guest. And that's what it's all about. At the same time, we just talked old. Let's just flip to talk about new technology. And there's a few things coming up that are quite interesting. The mobile wallet. Has anybody heard about Apple Pay yet? Has anybody embraced it yet? It is coming. The credit card is over. Cash is over. It's all going to be on the smartphone. There are already banks in Italy that have the information, and it is coming your way. So start to be prepared for it. Does anybody know what big data is? Anyone here? Do you know what big data is? Do you know the concept? Do you ever hear the line, big brother is watching? Anybody? Show of hands? No one? OK. Yes. I am uh, working with a company right now that is recording every single social media conversation in the world in real time 24-7. Every time somebody talks in Facebook, they're recording the data. They're analyzing that data, and they are doing what's known as predictive marketing and will be able to tell you, if you subscribe for one of their programs, exactly who your guest is before they even make a decision and you'll be able to market to them. These are new technologies coming that you should be aware of. They are not yet available, but you have to keep your eyes and ears open to this because this is the future of marketing for your hotel. Social media monitoring that you do is reactive rather than proactive, but nevertheless, it's an important aspect of your business. And reinventing wine. This is a system that's available. Has anybody ever seen this before? So this was a wine restaurant I went to, had 32 wines by the glass, all stored with nitrogen. So instead of you having four wines, you have 32 wines. And people can sample wines by the glass and this was an, an example. Those machines are available now, so start thinking about your wine programs, and this is a reinvention of how we deal and sell wine. You want to start looking at revenue strategies. I'm not going to get too technological here, but you have to move away from just saying, what is my average rate? It is completely irrelevant. It means nothing. If I told you that your rate was determined by the market, I think you might understand that, but it's not just the rate, it's all the other income that you can make. Would you rather have a person that comes into your hotel, spends 200 euros for a room, and then at the end basically doesn't do anything else? Or would you rather have a person that comes into your hotel, spends 100 euros, but spends 400 euros at dinner every night because they want to try your wines and try your food? I'll let you answer that yourself. 
because you want to think about rev, rev, you've heard rev par, but get in your mind rev pag, that's revenue per guest. Think about your guest revenue, don't think about your room revenue. And don't do this. This was a bill I got from a hotel. If you can understand all of this nonsense, I didn't. I looked and I said, I guess it's right because this went on for four pages. With every single item, well, I know it's an accountant's dream and I know you all have controllers who love this sort of thing. The guest just wants to see how much, what's the cost per room. You can put tax details at the bottom. Don't give them this. They'll just go crazy on you and capture your emails. You have people staying, get their email, tell them we want to strike up an ongoing conversation. Get the emails and get them correct and send to your front desk to get that information. It's vital for you. You have to grow your databases. Look at you when you're looking at rates, factor in your sales commissions to understand how much you're paying for that reservation because it is vital. And lastly, let me finish with, you want to surprise every day because surprises equals excitement equals memories and we are in the memory business that's what hotels are all about because every time you have a guest opportunity you have a great chance for you to go and talk and create those memories uh, there's me with a lady I went to this was in uh, Bocanvino and she invited me into her private wine cellar it cost her a lot of money I thought until she gave me a bill for the four bottles of Gaia that I drank which was a little expensive, but such is life. And these are examples of turndown memories. So this is at the Halakalani Hotel in Hawaii, and they know their average guest stays seven days. They have seven different turn, uh, turndown amenities. So how do you get started? Read the publications, attend seminars, travel and learn from other hotels, continually reassess, because it's all about talking about hospitality to your friends. There's my dog in the corner and only start what you can finish because remember true progress is slow you've got to keep at it here's a recap again i'll email you if you want and there's the email address it's really short five letters thank you thank you larry I see a very vigorous uh, applause, so I think there are a lot of volunteers in the audience this morning. Uh, let's uh, introduce, introduciamo i, i talk backer che sono dal 2003 è capo esecutivo dell'hotel Berna di Milano del Lugano Dante. In quello stesso anno il portale TripAdvisor gli riconosce il premio Travel's Choice 2013 Winner, il miglior servizio riconosciuto in tutta la Svizzera. Dal, nel novembre 2013 l'hotel Lugano Dante viene inoltre selezionato per il prestigioso premio Hotel Technology Innovators Award. Dal 2013 Carlo Fontana diviene il CEO di Oxel.com. Carlo Fontana. Hey, how are you? Entra nel mondo dell'ospitalità dalla headquarter di Subway, catena di fast food, non lo sapevo, glielo ho già detto, che non, non avevo idea che Giovanna facesse panini una volta, ma io ho fatto il lavapiatti. Eh, per cui, che eh, prosegue in Best Western come responsabile marketing in braccio destro del CEO, passa in Amadeus Global Distribution System, parentesi in Travel Online, primo portale italiano B2C di turismo, prima di tornare nel 2002 in Amadeus come direttore marketing. Dal 2004, nel 2004 il presidente di Best Western la richiama in azienda dove ha soli 37 anni e le affida l'incarico di CEO. Chief Executive Officer presso Best Western Italia, Giovanna Manzi. So, lady first. I'm, I'm the first one? Yes, you yeah, can yeah, give me... <laughs> So I would like, first of all, to thank you, uh, Larry, for your valuable tips. An I information, think. just sorry, just an information. Sorry. You have a little more time. Right. Uh, okay. Lo dico all'audience, uh, Carlo Petrini è in ritardo a causa di un incidente sull'autostrada, quindi possibilmente sposteremo il suo panel e non, uh, se qualcuno era qui per vederlo, un po' più avanti nel pomeriggio. Grazie. Okay. So I, uh, I would like to thank... Uh, Larry about uh, his tips uh, on the hotel industry and uh, I think are all very important 
But today, allow me to, to challenge a little bit, because my role today is a talkback, so I don't know if uh, you like uh, this kind of role. Sometimes it's difficult, and uh, it's nothing personal, of course. I love you. I'm you know. fine. <laughs> but uh, my first question is, what are the next 10 tips? I mean, I have heard things that are should be at least known by the majority of the audience. Let's hope. Mm. Hopefully. And in theory, they should apply every day what you have said before. Uh, and they are a little bit accustomed to hear something much more linked to internet, to this uh, very fast world. So my first question is, what next? Do you have, for instance, um, an idea of um, a thinking about uh, local search. I'm wondering if local search, how will impact on the hotel? For me, it's clear that will impact, for instance, on the restaurant business, but I'm, I'm not sure how will impact on the uh, hotel business. I mean, for local search, of course, the mobile searching, when you go around and you are uh, I can answer so this. I would like to hear from you. I can answer you. this very easily. Um, everyone who has a hotel here, and if I'm talking to hoteliers, think about your geographics of where your customers are coming from. If you're running a hotel, how many people, let's say you're in Florence, how many people are booking from Florence versus how many people are booking from Milan or booking from Rome? What you have to do is understand how your hotel appears in the geography that you are receiving your guests from. Local is very important for a restaurant, of mm. course it is. It may also be important for local meetings, local groups, but perhaps less so for situations where you're getting your bookings uh, remotely. Thank you. It was exactly my opinion, but you know you are the guru, so I'm I sorry. would like to ask you. Okay. <laughs> Just a confirmation. But you, you asked a very important question, and what is the future for hotels? I wish I could be an optimist, but I am not an optimist. I am very concerned and I'm worried. I'm worried that the hotel business has caught a cold, and that was called the OTAs, and now it's got the flu, which is called Airbnb. And I think some very radical medicine is needed for us to be successful. I don't own a hotel, I'm, I've sold my business, I'm quite comfortable and I'm, now I'm using all of my energy to focus hoteliers to wake up and realize that unless we as hoteliers get together and solve some of the problems that are facing us, we are in very serious jeopardy. I don't think anybody who's sitting here should sit back and relax and say, oh, things are going to be fine and go back to their regular day's job. You are in serious trouble. In uh, America, we would say, Airbnb is going to kick your ass. And you better be really careful because they are not playing with the same deck you are. They are cheaters. And I'm not referring to Airbnb, I'm referring to the people who have the inventory for Airbnb. Airbnb is a brilliant company. I know two of the three senior people, they are geniuses. They are the best and most highly trusted and respected people in the business. I love them as I wish I could work with them. But the people who have Airbnb inventory are all cheating the government. They're cheating you as hoteliers. And the second you realize that and you wake up and you say, I better talk to my ministers of tourism, I better talk to my locals, uh, members of parliament, my local um, councillors, and get them licensed and get them taxed, the better you'll be. I was working with the province of Quebec on drafting legislation in this area. We're making progress. But if you do not do it, mark my words, you all will be in trouble because Airbnb has a better website than you. Airbnb has better product than you. Airbnb has more product than you. And Airbnb is brilliantly run. You better take heed. This is a fantastic company and it is going to go after you in ways you've never learned before. Sorry. <laughs> No, I'm more, I'm more uh, worried than before. Huh? 
if I have to change my question. Sorry. So Larry, no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, Larry, you know, I'm an hotelier, so I would, uh, I'm talking about uh, as an hotelier. Uh, we have seen the 10 nice, very interesting points you showed us. Very easy, very, very simple to be understood. On the other hand, as an hotelier, even if you may be part of, let's say, a, a company or a tail chain, a consortia, I really feel that all of them, 10, are already a huge work. So uh, every single day, it is really very hard to try to comply to all of these 10 points. It is really very hard, especially when you, the, 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 key, the third key takeaway was, uh, I, I just read it, be flawless to be perfect. And uh, we understand that the role of people is very important there. And we know how hard it is to hire the right people. Uh, we were talking before about the housekeeping manager, the housekeeping ladies. So uh, service is all about people and smile. So as you said before, 85%, 90% of the hotels in Italy are individually owned or perhaps they, they take part to marketing uh, chains. Is there, how do you see the future of an individual hotel? So is there any possibility to really to survive against the giants? So these points, as I see, are, are hard for everybody. So are hard for a four-season hotel, are hard for a three-star hotel. Uh, nevertheless, if you take part to a company or a big chain or not. So what you, you also said uh, that the, 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 the key principles are anticipate, uh, uh, meet, exceed, and anticipate. This is, this is common to everybody. So is there any hope for the future for us as individual hoteliers? There is hope. And there are a lot of opportunities for you. And it starts with education. There are great students coming out of hotel schools, coming out of community colleges, coming out of uh, trade and technical schools who need jobs. Mm. They're young people. They're encouraged. They're not jaded by uh, years in the industry, and I'd encourage everybody to take on an intern or two, even in a small hotel, and see whether they love the hotel world. Uh, in my own business, we've always had one or two interns every year. Some get it, some don't, but the secret is in youth, and bringing young people in and getting their enthusiasm and encouragement, and for you, as if you're more senior, to train them and share with them your love of hospitality, your love of service, and I think it will catch on. And getting younger people involved, training, getting feedback. Um, when I was a manager on duty, the first thing I would do was eat my meals in the hotel cafeteria with my staff and really understand what they're doing and yell and scream if the food was not up to my standards. The food in the cafeteria should be almost equal or equal to what was being served the guests. Not necessarily as fancy and maybe family or cafeteria style, but it should have quality. And everybody should be thinking about how they as general managers, as managing directors are involved. And think of yourself as not up on a pedestal, but invert the pyramid so that the most important part of your team is the staff that faces the guest and the further you are away from the guest, the, le the less importance you have. If you start thinking that way and start creating a relationship with your staff, which is where it all starts, eventually it will move on with the guest. Many of these situations are not magic bullets that you will say, oh, I learned this at BTO, I'm going to apply it right away in my hotel. You have to think about it, plan it, Ask your spouse about it, what they think, they're involved in the business, and then execute things slowly. If you come away from this conference and start doing all of these things, your staff's going to say, whoa, what happened to him or her? She's really different. Something happened. And they might be scared by it. So you want to institute these things gradually. So it has something to do with what you said before, staff empowerment. Yes. yes. Right. Staff empowerment is ultimately better. our success. Remember one thing. And I'm talking here about the leisure business and to a certain extent your um, individual business traveler. And here's a little edge you have versus Airbnb. When I am traveling, and I do probably more traveling than most anybody in this room, I think every time I, I put my key in the slot of a door, I'm looking for some treat. 
I'm looking for something special. I'm looking for something better than when I go to my home. I do not want to make the bed. I do not want to clean the bathroom. I don't want my wife yelling at me because I left a mess of uh, breakfast dishes. I want the coffee to be fresh. I want it to be served to me perfectly. These are things you can't do in Airbnb, but these are things you can do in your hotel. A little thank you note on the bed, a little cookie, a little biscotti with served extra, something that gives you a little added memory. These are items that we can do which Airbnb can't do. I'm going to give you one really quick example. Mm -hmm. A hotel in California called Montage Resort. If you ever get an opportunity to go there, please do so. It's in Laguna Beach. As you leave in your car, somebody runs up and hands you a brown paper bag. You say, what's in the bag? And in the bag is a bunch of uh, candies. And they said, well, you've got a 45 minute drive back to the airport, so we brought you some treats. The total cost of the bag is approximately one US mm -hmm. dollar. And yet it left such an important impression with me. And think if you might have heard the term LIFO, which is a accounting term, which means last in, first out. Think about the memory. We know about the concept of sense of arrival, very important in a hotel, but where we fail is sense of departure. The most I get from a typical hotel is, would you like me to staple your American Express receipt to your bill? Oh, who gives a blank? I don't care, I'm giving it to my controller anyways. Just put it in an envelope and give it to me. But what's more important is embracing me, maybe giving me a little treat, a little bon voyage gift, something. But I get, oh, I can put it in an envelope for you. Oh, who cares? It's Larry, gonna go in the trash anyways. Larry, I have a question for you. Sure. Philip, right here. I Hi, Philip. Straight ahead, straight ahead. Here I am, all over here. How many Airbnb properties have you personally stayed in? Three, and okay. they were all fantastic. Yeah. I stayed once for a week in Los Angeles. I was going to stay at the peninsula at $1,100 a night. I found a home in the Holmby Hills where I had three bedrooms, a pool, and maid service for $700 yeah. a night. So, it was uh, out of this world. So just a couple of things. I also stay in a hotel 150, 175 nights a year for 30 years. One of those crazy You're people a road that live on like an airplane. Yep. I've stayed at lots of Airbnbs and home aways and stay Alfreds and oh, Vietnam and Oh, I've also stayed at VRBO and, and all that, yeah. And sometimes the coffee's actually even better because the coffee machines are better. Um, so just one alternate thing to think about. Some small hoteliers have check-in services, reception, cleaning services, laundry services, concierge services. Maybe think about, instead of fighting and saying they're bad, because I don't want to get into all the legal ramifications, but most Airbnb hosts do pay taxes. It's a different kind of tax. It's an income tax. It does go to the coffers. They also lower prices during conventions for thousands of customers. By, by, by adding uh, demand. But some small hoteliers are actually considering working with Airbnb hosts to provide those services you say that's not possible. Look at all the Airbnb properties one, two, five kilometers from your property. Maybe you could check them in. Maybe you could walk them over. Maybe you could offer cleaning services. Maybe you could use your linens instead of the host linens. Maybe you could serve them breakfast. Maybe they could use your lobby. Maybe they could use your swimming pool. The concierge maybe could recommend a restaurant, still be an Airbnb experience. And there's some compatibility and cooperation instead of fighting all the time. I, uh, let me respond to that. I think those mm. are fantastic ideas. And I think it's, those are um, locational issues. I, as I said, Airbnb is a fantastic company and it offers a great product. And sometimes their product is different and perhaps a little bit better for the situation than going to a hotel. You're absolutely correct. Through collaboration, there are many opportunities for hotels to gain incremental funds. But I also would challenge the fact that if I was an owner and I was looking at an asset which had millions of dollars of value, would I really want to look at ancillary income opportunities versus amortizing a couple of million euros worth of uh, infrastructure and, and real estate? Again, it has to be a one-on-one -on -one decision. And if I had a three or four room B&B &B and I was looking at supplementing and augmenting my income 
through uh, related services that makes total sense. And I think it has to be on an individual situation. Again, let me state for the record that I, I think Airbnb is a brilliant product, and that's what scares me so much about it as a hotelier. In effect, it is a better product because we talk about TripAdvisor. They have two-way TripAdvisor offering opportunities directly on the website. For those who have not yet been to an Airbnb website and not yet undertaken an Airbnb experience, as a hotelier, I strongly encourage you to do it because it is a real eye-opener and is a tremendous learning opportunity for your own website. Airbnb is a brilliant product. It is well done. I just question the fact that taxes are being paid. I think that many Airbnb owners that I know, and my sister is one of them, um, Good. I don't think they're paying any tax. I don't think so. I do her tax returns, and I never saw any income from Airbnb on there. So he, he has stolen me my second question because I would like to, to ask exactly this, which are the points of contact between the, the hotellerie, the, our um, environment, and this kind of new hospitality experience. But I think the, the gentleman gave, and also Larry endorsed. So uh, this was the second. So I go to, uh, to the, the third one. It is the um, coming back to internet. I would like to, to, to ask you, uh, how do you uh, see Internet of Things can affect the experience at hotel level? I think the Internet world is changing, and I'm, I can't hypothesize everything in the future, although in my first book I predicted the mergers of Expedia Orbits and Travelocity two years before it happened. I'm also predicting now, and I'll state it for a fact, that Expedia will probably acquire one of the major hotel chains within a year or two, because the only risk to their model is the fact they don't have enough inventory. So why not just buy the inventory? I'm also going to make the projection here that a lot of hotels are going to convert themselves into old age residences, because it's guaranteed 100% occupancy all the time, guaranteed 100% F&B all the time, and there's a bunch of old people that are getting older that won't be able to travel, and it's a way of adjusting for inventory against Airbnb. In terms of web, all I want you to do is think video, because the world is going video. Less words, more pictures. I think, I think we, any, any we have, yes, there? I think we have a, a question from the expert table, Valentina. Yes, you mentioned the um, star classification and you said that it's not working much anymore. I wanted to know, I'm curious to know, what do you think about a possible classification that matches stars with a rating of uh, online uh, uh, websites, of reviews or well, similars? It's very funny. I, I, one of our clients is a um, hotel management firm that has two properties situated three kilometers apart on the coast of California. One is a luxury hotel under the Hilton chain. Another one is a Hilton Garden Inn. Which one do you think has a higher rating in TripAdvisor? The answer is the Hilton Garden Inn because the rate's 129 US dollars a night. And for 129 dollars, they do a pretty good job. The other one's 289 dollars a night. And at 289 dollars American a night, people are far more critical. So I ask you, which one is a better product? Well, they're both very good products within their classification, but if you were arriving from Italy and you didn't know any different, and you said, I don't know a Hilton Garden Inn from a Hilton Resort, you might pick the Hilton Garden Inn because you look and say, well, it's got a 4.7 rating versus 4.3 for the other one, and it's $100 less. How could that be? And the answer is, it's a different experience. So the stars are important, but to the educated traveler, you have to dig below the stars and look at the product and understand a little bit more, because every product has unique advantages. Every product has a different raison d'etre. Yeah. I, I go ahead, yeah. yes. uh, One of your slides uh, uh, says, uh, new technology. And for me, as an hotelier, it is really, really hard because uh, there's a lot of confusion. There are many companies you know, growing every single day. They come and tell you, this is my best solution. You can do this and that. And being an hotelier, it's difficult to take a decision because you really don't understand the benefits. 
and uh, perhaps uh, you may also have great investments to do this. And then at the same time in your book, you say there's a good technology, but there's also a bad technology. But what is really important is to uh, build bridges between departments. Could you please help me to understand better the role of technology uh, in hotel operations? And I make you another example, which is quite known today in the market. You, everybody heard about Triptease, perhaps uh, Triptease, an American company, who, which developed this OTA widget where the hotelier can explain to his visitors that the rates he's applying are the same uh, applied in other channels. And now we read a few days ago that uh, an important OTA is going against this company and was asking hotelier to take this widget away from their websites. And basically, it is my price is 90, my price on Expedia is 90, my price on Booking.com is 90. So being an hotelier, there's a new service. Uh, uh, they install many, many hotels. And now we have to think, well, it is not good. We have to take it away once again. So uh, what is your perception of the importance of technology, which kind of technology? Because technology is everything. I mean, apps. It's, uh, I, uh, I will tell you one thing, and the reason for this conference is that technology is a moving target. Technology is changing every day. You see one piece of technology today, and uh, tomorrow it's been replaced. Everybody knows that you bought a Google iPhone 6, and now they have iPhone 6 Plus, and they're probably planning iPhone 7, and soon you'll have iPhone 8, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that's given. That's life. We also know that there are technologies that are taking place in the hotel world that manage, say, housekeeping, uh, also manage engineering, also manage the guest. And these are merging. These technologies are coming together. As I mentioned, remember that the guest and your staff have a very close relationship. And the technologies that bring these close together really enhance the quality of the guest experience because ultimately think about yourself as a guest you are a human being you want to respond and react to other human beings you don't go like this all day without every once in a while looking up and saying oh isn't that nice i really appreciate it here's a coffee here is a biscotti etc etc we we are human animals we want to interact socially Although if you have teenage kids, you might know that they don't react to anything, but that's okay. They'll grow out of it at some point in time, we hope. Mine are 30. They haven't quite grown out of it, but they're getting closer. And I think ultimately that relationship that you create between yourself and the guest and how you can use technology to enhance that relationship is critical. I also will say that there are new technologies that I've seen, and if there's one other conference that you should go to, and I'm not related with these people at all, it is go to high tech, which takes place in June. This year it's in uh, New Orleans. Next year it's going to be in 2016. It's in New Orleans, 2017 in Toronto. You will see technologies there that will be coming to Europe five years from now, and you'll be able to see it ahead of scale, and you'll be able to realize that the world of technology is moving so incredibly fast that it is exciting for the hotelier. But don't forget one thing. The guest is still the guest, and you have to make sure the guest experience is perfect. If you get it wrong, I don't care how much technology you have, it's not a substitute. Thank you, Helen. So coming back to your presentation, you started saying that there are too many brands no, yes. in the world. Do you really think that brands are no more important? Because for me, it's a very bad news, as you can imagine. Um, I, am, I come from a world of Procter & Gamble. Anybody heard of this company? It's pretty good, pretty big. It's got about half a million employees around the world. And I studied the area of brand management and brand science. I, was a brand, I managed a brand called Crest Toothpaste. You ever hear of it? $2.7 billion in sale with a 38% profit margin. So let's think about that business. And what we learned in the brand, business of brands is one simple rule, and I, I really want to use that. Share of mind, which is your brain power, equals share of voice, 
which is what percent of the media world, all the input that we get, equals share of market. So think about this for a minute as an equation and now apply that to brands. So Best Western does a great job of promoting their brand through advertising. All different sorts, from television to print, they have a massive campaign. That makes that brand valuable because you get a share of mind, it gets share of market. As long as a brand can use that to their strength, they are irrelevant. The second they stop using that, they are irrelevant. Why do you think Starwood was purchased by Marriott? Did you ever see a Starwood ad in your life? Do you know what Starwood is? The answer is no. I don't know what it is. Therefore, the company was irrelevant and therefore it got acquired by Marriott. It's pretty simple once you look at it that way. And that is the whole issue with brands. You have to support them. If you don't support the brand, it is irrelevant. And that's when you have too many brands and dilute the message, there's no reason for the brand, and therefore the brand dies. Thank you very much. Is there any, any, any question? Is there any, any question? Otherwise, I have another question. Uh, the last two pages of your book, which really impressed me a lot, I already told this to you. Don't be a slow tellier. Yeah where you say that, especially in the hospitality sector, whenever we take a decision, it is always too late, which means that it is really hard, change is hard. And you're also saying that uh, we spend a lot of time in organizing meetings. We try to, uh, to verify and go deeply inside in every single data, and we may lose the big picture, and whenever the decision is taken, it has already gone. So that impressed me quite a lot. That is what it is happening, I think. And another thing you are saying is that real change is slow. So it is more related to an attitude than technology. Could you please go further in this sl sure. slow atelier? Um, I remember uh, when I was working in hotels that you would have an executive meeting uh, once a day, planning meeting, where we we talk about meetings, and I. I, meetings get endless in terms of how many there are and how many people have to be involved in each meeting. And I, I make crazy suggestions and that are, that are as follows. If you want to improve your hotel operation, raise the level of the conference table so everybody has to stand and nobody can sit. That's number one, so they don't get comfortable. Number two, don't serve any food, don't serve any coffee just water. Number three, all cell phones get put in the drawer away from the meeting and say, okay, now we're going to have a meeting, let's talk and let's get things going. And just like we have timers here, have a timer that goes down and when the, when the, when the meeting is over at 20 minutes, people leave. Whether they got the work done or not, it's over. And you have to look at it and say, I'm going to change and become disruptive in how I run my property. I'm going to change my feel and my structure. I'm going to have meetings not always presented by me, but presented by different members of the staff. I'm going to treat my, my team to learn about the future. And as I said in my presentation, it starts with you as the general manager setting an example and learning, going back to school in effect to understand all of the materials that you see such as at conferences like this. And I wonder how many general managers actually go and sit and talk at every one of the booths and learn about technology, try to understand what's coming and try to say what are the implications for my business. Not necessarily purchasing it because you can't buy everything, there's capex budgets, etc. But trying to understand what one item I'm going to improve this year and what I'm going to do next year and the year after because ultimately this is what will lead us to better business and technology is our future, technology is how we will improve the guest experience. So, time is over. Time's time is over. over. Yeah. Time is over. We're done. We're done. If you have some if you like, or other questions. questions. Is there, we have just the time for one question from the floor. Is anyone who wants to make a question? Yes? No? If yeah. One. Yes. Yeah, so Mr. Mogilovs. Working. Should, should be on. Here it is. So Mr. Mogilovsky, uh, just one question. So at last, how should we deal 
with the Airbnb competition and because what you said is very enlightening to me um, but uh, in, in my hometown the, the, the reality is what you said actually because most of those who, who work with Airbnb are doing, are doing it illegally so the question is how should uh, like a small hotel as mine like 50 rooms hotel deal with this challenge <laughs> I, very, I, very difficult question. I, have I, to say. I wish it was. I wish it was that simple. It is not simple. It, there's not an easy solution. The first step is is awareness to understand the situation and to make sure that your counselors are uh, aware of it. The second thing is that most hotels are part of a local hotel association. It should be the number one priority within your local hotel association. There is strength in numbers. You might have a number of Airbnbs in your neighborhood. Everybody does. But you also have a number of hotels. Use your political power to generate and all I ask is level the playing field. In other words, whatever taxes and inspections you have, they should have the same taxes and inspections. You are not out to eliminate them. You're out to level the playing field to make sure everybody's operating in the same way. Nobody can argue with that. And if you're, everybody's doing everything the same, have the same inspections, pay the same taxes, pay all of the appropriate licenses, make sure the insurance is at a commercial rate, not at a residential rate, make sure their car is a commercial car, not a residential car, and all the other items in the filings, then you've got a chance because the burden of government on an individual is brutal because you have, as a hotelier, you have a controller, you have a lawyer, you have staff that manage things, they have to do the same thing. You'll see that the number of Airbnb um, properties might go down if they have to manage it that way. And those Thank that are left, you can embrace. Thank you, Larry. Time is over. Thanks to Giovanna. Thank you. Thank you. Carlo. Thank you. Larry. Thank you. Thank you very much.